Okay, so this is EE 2900, week four, lecture three. So today we're going to continue our foray into Boolean algebra. So this is section 2.5 in your book. And recall that uh, basically what we're doing was last lecture, we did some examples of Boolean, of proving Boolean theorems and Boolean algebra using axioms. So today we'll continue with that basically. So our, our concept, the first concept we'll cover today, today is this idea of duality. So this is a, duality is basically, it's a deep mathematical idea. And in the context of Boolean algebra, in the context of Boolean algebra, In a Boolean expression, if we replace every occurrence of AND with OR, in other words, AND, OR are dual operators, and 0, replace every occurrence of AND with OR, 0 with 1, we will get the dual expression. As an example, let's say you have x and, this is the distributivity rule, uh, y or z is x and y, or x and z, so it's a double arrow. This is the dual of this is you take and, you replace it with or, okay, y or z is x or y and x or z. So in other words, you take the and, replace it with an or, or with an and, and with an or, or with an and, and with an or, and here there's no zeros or ones to replace. But basically, you will recall that this was the expression we proved last lecture. Okay, That's one idea, duality. The other idea, is what is called De Morgan's theorem. Okay, and this is basically from set theory. So we're not going to prove this. Okay, but if you, if you want to prove, go through any book on set theory, and you can find the proof. Again, on an aside, the reason why we do all this is to understand combinational logic design. And as we will start doing examples, for example, of adders, multiplexers, you will see where all of this is used. So again, please practice the suggested problems and as many problems as necessary to understand these ideas. Okay. So the De Morgan theorem in your book is 15a and 15b. It basically says x and y not is the same as x not or y not. In other words, you can take this not operation and as you distribute it on this variable x here and variable y here, this and becomes an or. So schematically, so consequently, there is another De Morgan's, and it looks like my journal writer is going to crash. I'm not going to take any chances. I'm going to close, save it, close it, and reopen it again. So basically, the other version of this is x or y not is x not and y not. Okay. So in other words, schematically. If you want to think about it, it's basically saying that if I have a NAND gate, if I push this bubble, like this bubble here, through, you change the shape of the gate. So if you call this F, so basically what you get is, I mean, this is a very, in my opinion, a bad mnemonic to remember De Morgan's theorem. The best way, in my opinion, to remember this theorem is that it's very elegant. Right? I mean, this is almost, this has to be true. And this one, consequently, is if I have an OR gate, I mean, sorry, a NOR gate, this is equal to basically pushing the NOT through but changing the shape of the gate right there. Okay. But yeah, and you can generalize it. So generalizing this, generalization 
of this would be x1, x2, x3, dot, 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 xn, the whole knot is x0 or x2 naught, x1 naught or x2 naught or x3 naught to xn naught and consequently x1 or x2 or dot 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 or xn the whole knot is x1 knot and x2 knot dot 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 and xn knot. Okay? So it's a very powerful result. So for example, let's look at 16a. Let's prove using algebraic manipulation and the hint for this problem is you obviously have to use De Morgan's theorem. XR, X0, and Y is the same as XR, Y. It's, I mean, you can see that this tells you that if I have an expression like this, this X0 really doesn't matter. And these kind of expressions, if you will, make sense in Boolean algebra, right? So let's prove this. Again, recall that you have to go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So here is the proof. So in this case, I'll start on the left-hand side because just looking at it has more terms. Okay. So I can write this as, so I want to apply De Morgan's theorem. In other words, I'm saying that A not not equals A. You can look in your book for the appropriate number of the theorem or axiom, whatever it is. So that's that. Okay. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply, so let me uh, use a different color. So I'm going to apply De Morgan's, okay? So again, this is, you don't want to write, use different colors. I mean, you just don't want to do this in a mathematical proof. Let's circle something and say De Morgan's. I'm just doing this so you can understand what's going on, okay? And actually, I will discontinue this because it does get pretty confusing. So I'm going to apply 15b here to this expression and simplify it at the same time. So basically what I'm going to get is x0 and x0 y0, okay? And this is not which comes along from the right. So this again becomes, so if I apply De Morgan's to this, so I'll just write the De Morgan's. I mean, I have the number up there, so I'm just going to write 15b. So I'm now applying 15a, x0, not, not, and x0, not, 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 or y0. Not. Okay. So this is 15a. Now continuing to apply this, so x0, not, not is x. Okay. So x0, not, or x, or y0, not, not. Okay. So a0, not, not is a. Now, this is applying distributivity. I believe this is 12a distributivity. I remember this from last lecture. So this is x0 and x, or x0 and y0 not. To call it x0 and x is 0, okay? Because if this was 0, x0 would be a 1. And if this was 1, this would be a 0. So this basically becomes x0 was 0 or anything is 0 or x is x. That's better. Okay. So this is basically we said a and a0 is 0. a or 0 is a. Okay. Those are the two things we applied here. And this again applying De Morgan's, which is 15a. We get x0 not, not or y0 not. not and this is x or y, which is RHS, okay? So again, a beautiful, beautiful result. Okay, so there it is. So that's about it for D Morgans. So again, I now, rec I mean, uh, now, again, um, please practice and work on suggested problems that and practice as much as you can it's the message here 
Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get into basically Boolean expressions of arbitrary logic functions. So let's take our an example which we covered a few weeks back. That is, the uh, the goal is let me first write this out. Write a logic expression for a given function in terms of and or not and then and then minimize the given expression I'll put this in a star in the sense nowadays all the minimization stuff is done by the FPGA tool but of course it is necessary for you to understand the concept behind this so you can use the tool very efficiently so we will look at uh, an example a particular that you will use is K maps Carnot maps because it helps you understand Boolean algebra better, the K-map minimization technique. But please understand that an FPGA synthesis tool doesn't really draw a K-map. Okay? It uses other techniques such as Shannon's expansion, which we will not cover. But the bottom line is, again, all of this is geared towards helping you understand how to design digital logic in the 21st century. So don't lose sight of the forest for its trees. But uh, let's give a, please keep in mind the big picture. But in order to um, start understanding this goal, let's go back to the example that we did a few weeks back of the exclusive OR gate. So there's x1, x0. x1 exclusive OR x0 is y. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So it's a two input exclusive OR. So we'll start with this 0, 1, 1, 0. And so there's actually a call. So here is the circuit symbol for the exclusive OR. So here is x1, x0. Here is y, okay? And we basically said that we can write y as something like this, x1 uh, not x0 or x1 and x0 not. So the way to read this is y is a 1 when x1 is 0, which is, or x1 is uh, false, which is represented by x1 not, if you want to use true or false, and x0, or it's 1 when x1 is true and x0 is false, which is represented by this term. But the question is, is there a systematic way to do this for arbitrary logic functions? And the answer is yes. Okay. So what implies we can obtain and the details of doing this are actually in your suggested reading or in the reading, not suggested. You should do the reading in your book. So I'm just going to give you the ideas and do examples. But basically the idea is we can obtain logic expressions as either SOP or sum of products involving min terms or product of sum involving max terms. Okay. So, so, in this case, we have what is called as a sum of product. Right? So, there it is using min terms. And the technical definition of a min term is again in your book, but basically a min term is a one for only one row in the truth table. So in other words, if you look at this min term, and correspondingly there is the max term, which is a zero for only one row in the truth table. And we'll look at the max term expression for this shortly. But basically, if you look at this min term, this is one only for this row. So for example, x1 not and you should confirm this for x1 and x0 not but if you take this x1 not and x0 is 0 for this row because x0 is 0 it's 0 for this row because again x0 is 0 and it's 0 for this row because x1 not is 0 okay so it makes sense that you can write this 
logic function now as the min term for this row or with the min term for that row. So more specifically, if you look at min terms and max terms for a simple example, so let's look at x1, x0, okay, and let's just write out 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So let's just write out the min term and max terms for actually two input logic functions, and then we'll write the exclusive or in terms of max terms, because we've already done the min terms. The min term corresponding to this row is x1 naught, x0 naught, okay? The min term corresponding to this row is x1 naught and x0. So in other words, if you think about it, since the min term involves uh, sum of products, okay, so since it involves product terms, you have to make sure that the only way you'll get a one is if you have all ones in the end, yes? That's why if you notice here, the min term corresponding to this row is x1 naught and x0 naught. Okay. So for this one is x1 and x0 naught, and for this one it's x1, x0. The max term corresponding to this row is now simply x1 or x0, okay? So the max term, if you will, so in other words, these are complements. Complements of each other, and you, that's this is where De Morgan's theorem is applicable. Okay, so I am very, very uh, powerful in the sense if you think about it, these kind of rules are not present for the system of real numbers. It's not the Boolean system. Okay, so that's why digital logic exploded. Right, so it's just very trivial to understand all this, but you have to practice. Okay, so this is x1 or x0 naught, this is x1 naught or x0, the maximum corresponding to this is x1 naught or x0 naught, so the, for the exclusive or, x1 exclusive or x0, recall, is x1 naught x0 or x0 x1 naught, but it can also be written using max terms, that is, you have to use the zeros zero rows in the truth table, which is x1 or x0, and x1 naught or x0 naught. So this is the product of sums expressions. And if you think about it, if you actually simplify this, you're going to get this. Okay. I mean, you can just do this in your head. If you just use distributivity and the fact that x1 and x1 naught is zero, you basically get this. Okay. So again, very, very simple but powerful ideas. So the goal is we basically, you either use sum of products, or product of sums, which is, which to use all depends on the logic function and the minimization. So speaking about minimization, let's look at an example, and we won't have time to cover this in this video, but I'll we'll do this in the next lecture video. Okay. So in the sense, let's look at a more um, esoteric, if you will, example. So let's design. 2-bit adder, and then we'll minimize this, okay, later, 2-bit, uh, let's be more specific, unsigned adder, that is, basically, the solution is we can, we'll start out with a truth table, because again, we're just beginning our foray into Boolean algebra, and I want you, to, I want to make sure that you really understand what's going on. You can directly write out the logic expression for a two-bit unsigned adder once you become very familiar with 2900. But for now, let's do it step by step. So before we do the truth table, actually, let's do a little uh, block diagram, if you will. So here is a block diagram. That is, you have basically an adder. Okay. So you have two two-bit numbers, x1, x0, and y1, y0. Okay. So as an example, uh, so if you want to look at this, so I have 0, 1, 1, 1. So this is 1 plus 3. And so this is binary. So this is in decimal. Recall our notation, 1, 3. So if you add this, you get a 4. If you do this in binary, so it's 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry out is 1. So you basically need three output uh, logic functions. So let's call this S0, let's call this S1, let's call this S2. 
So basically you have just to S2, S1, S0, just to keep it consistent that the most significant bit is, I want to keep it up here. So S2, S1 is 0. So in other words, now what you can do is you can generate a truth table x1, x0, y1, y0. is S2, S1, S0. Now you can see that generating a truth table for every problem might become very difficult because in this case, it, you have basically a four input logic function. So you have 16 rows, okay? You have three outputs. So, uh, but for this, we'll do the truth table anyway, 0, 0, 0. So let me just do this, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 1, 1. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pass the lecture, generate the truth table. What I recommend you do is you also take a piece of paper, if you haven't done, if you haven't been doing that already, uh, generate the truth table, and then compare this with my answer. So let me pause the lecture, generate the truth table, then we'll continue. Okay, continuing. So here is the truth table. And you can see that you have 16 rows. I've divided it into blocks of four. So you should have four entries per block, four, eight, 12, 16, so that looks good. Three outputs, and you can see, for example, 1 plus 0 is 1, 2 plus 3 is 5, and so forth. So hopefully you are able to fill this out, but now the question is, you'll be like, wow, how do I generate either the sum of products or products of sum for these outputs? I mean, if you can, it's just, it's a lot of writing. So next time, in next lecture, we will cover this in the sense we will look at what is called as a K-map or a Carnot map, which is another way, number point number one, Carnot map. It's another way to represent a logic function. But not only that, the Carnot map can be used or is, well, it people, I don't want to say used to use it in the sense it's, again, this whole idea of all these concepts of K-map being outdated and all that stuff is not true because it helps you really understand the concept. So anyway, uh, number one, a Carnot map is another way of representing a logic function. Number two, it really helps you spot the consensus theorem. And if you read the book, the uh, appropriate section, you'll understand what I'm talking about. If you don't, go back and read the book. But anyway, it helps you apply the consensus theorem visually. So next time, we will continue with this example and get the logic expression, the minimized logic expression for S2, S1, S0 using K-maps or Carnot maps. See you then.